Something we've known for a long time, Mr. Barber. Basically, my entire life, nobody sucks the life out of you like the New York Jets. They literally ruin what is supposed to be the best day of the week. You have your food, you have your fantasy, you have your gambling, and you have your teams. And then you sit down and the Jets start playing football, and they really ruin Sundays. You know, <clears throat> so you know, I, I gotta tell, I've really struggled with what I'm about to say. Because the last thing I want to do, because people do turn around slow starts. Mm-hmm. Look at Bill Parcells, right. all right? I'm not talking about this season. I'm talking about the coach. I thought about this, and I really said, man, are we, are we going to go here three games into year two of Robert Sala's tenure? And I thought about it, and I really thought about it, and the answer is yeah. Mm. Yeah, we're going here. This is where we're going to start the show. Uh, I have seen nothing. I have seen nothing from Robert Sala that – instills an ounce of confidence in me that signals that the Jets, unlike almost every other hire that they make, actually got this one right. You want to put something on a bumper sticker? You want to make T-shirts? You want to look good? Yeah, they got that part right. He looks the part. And then you watch the Jets play football. And you see them burn a timeout one minute into the third quarter after halftime. That is JV stuff. And then you watch him before this. I might jump around a little bit here, Tiki. Mm-hmm. So if it's not chronologically no, sound, bear good. with me, buddy. It's all good. All right, because we're all pissed. I'll calm you, I'll calm you down eventually. Uh, um, then we see them come out of the tunnel in this, in the weakest, I can't stand MetLife Stadium. I absolutely despise it. It is gross. It is lifeless. And that's not a knock at the fans. You know I love you. That's not that's not on you. Then they come out, coming off a miraculous win, and I'm expecting some energy against. By the way, a team whose quarterback was sacked 51 times last year, the most in the NFL. Uh, as good as Burrow is, and Chase and Higgins and Mixon, all those guys are really good. He was sacked 13 times coming into yesterday's game. Yep, most in the NFL. And this team comes out, and once again they get drilled. Absolutely waxed at home. All right. Then we see more of the same, and it's driving me nuts. The selfish, deflating penalties that are born out of a lack of discipline. Again, which is a direct correlation to the coach. Then we see disorganization on defense. Again, confusion, blown coverage, missed tackles, broken plays. Guys going to the house when they shouldn't be, that's on the coach. Then we have a pretty good player, and I have a lot of respect for DJ Reed, who came from two good organizations, Seattle and the Niners. This guy's been here a minute, and this guy is, is basically giving us a dissertation on what is wrong with the team. There's no organization, we're sloppy, and he even used the word coaches. So when you come in from something good and you walk into something bad, you know. Now, now here's the biggest problem with the New York Jets right here. I got to put the hood on because I'm starting to get the beads of sweat because that's what happens when I get worked up. Now you have a 20, and, I, and I'm rooting for Zach, and I hope he's the guy. But now you have a 23-year-old kid who may or may not be the future. We don't know, man. We know he can throw. We know he can run. We know they got more weapons, blah, blah, blah. But now he's being in circus. He's going to play this week, thank God, so the fossil could go back to the bench. That's Joe Flacco. You've got, a, a hopefully, a franchise quarterback who is now put into the pressure cooker situation, the most unenviable position to be in sports, where he's thrust into a season, and the expectation is that he's got to save the season. Oh, yeah, by the way, good luck doing that with no offensive line. So, Tiki, I am not here to say, and I don't know that I'm very far away from saying this eventually, and if I need to, you know your partner, I will. I'm not saying... That Salas should get fired tomorrow like some crazy lunatics, right? No, I've got to be a little bit above that. I've got to at least check some emotion at the door and and be a professional. But I'm going to ask you, the guy who actually played football, I want to know from you, the guy who knows more football than your pinky, than my entire family tree combined. 
I want to know from you what you see from Robert Sava outside of a beautifully bald, glistening head. Boy, he gets a very good shave on that thing. I'm actually jealous. The beard's looking good. The great tan. He is absolutely jacked. Aside from that stuff, which means nothing on Sunday, what are you seeing from Robert Sala? Because I'm not seeing much. Well, let me let me back up before I answer that question. And I think the problem for Jets fans, who are all, all like you right now, on this Monday, they are feeling the exact same thing that you are feeling. This frustration, this anger, this this lack of, of direction, undisciplined. By the way, that's the biggest one, the undisciplined nature, because that's ultimately what let the Cincinnati Bengals go this go run out to this big lead, right? The the the, the roughing the passers, the you know, the 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 late hit, whatever it was, late hits, etc. The offensive one as well, that lack of discipline is disturbing because it wasn't just one guy that was rogue. It was kind of all guys Mm -hmm. that were a little bit rogue. Now, maybe that's born out of frustration. But the the biggest issue for Jets fans right now is they you all had this heightened expectation for this Jets team. And now that they're not even close to it, it's frustrating. And you want to know the answers. You're trying to find, find the answers why. Part of it is the offensive line. Part of it is the fact that Zach Wilson can't stay healthy, and as a result, you're stuck with Joe Flacco. But I think the bigger part of it defense is the is the defense, which actually has played well, right? Given what they have been tasked They didn't play do, well yesterday. Nonsense. They came out. They gave up a touchdown, 80 yards. They had it shoved I'm talking about, down their throat I'm, on the first possession. I'm talking about in totality this season. They played well against the Ravens, stopping the run. They played well. It was raining. Uh, yeah, exactly. Whatever. They, no, played, so they weren't throwing the ball, they, and they, they could stack up against the they, run. They played well against the Bengals this week, stopping the run. But the problem is they're only doing one good, one thing well. They're not doing everything well defensively. And for Robert Sala, he unfortunately is going to be compared to the other young head coaches in the NFL. Young meaning first-time head coaches in the NFL. That is obviously the guy across the hall who is Brian Dable, who's 2-0 and right now. You already feel the difference in the New York Giants. Mm-hmm. That is Mike McDaniel in the same division down in Miami who is has the Dolphins 3-0 and uh, at the young start. It is Nick Sirianni, the Philadelphia Eagles, who nobody knew. He thought he was just a, a, a whatever hire. He, they went to the playoffs last year in Philly, and he's also 3-0. and You got Kevin O'Connell. It's a different situation in Minnesota because they were actually somewhat decent last year, but he's a first-year head coach. They're 2-1. and You got Doug Peterson, experienced Super Bowl champion, different scenario, but the Jags... But even the Lions are showing more life. But hold on, the Jags sucked. Yeah, yeah, no question. The Jags were... No question. We're below where the Jets were. Correct. And Doug Peterson has them two and one. They should be three and zero oh, because they should have beat Washington uh-huh. in Week One. Yeah, no. And then you got Matt Eberflus, who, who and the Bears. He's even two and one. He's not really in the conversation. But the microwave nature with which we look at quarterbacks these days is now being applied to head coaches. And if you're not seeing a tangible difference in from week to week. And in this case, year year one to year two, the criticism is going to come. And that's where Robert Sala finds himself. And the, the, on, to be honest, BT, because it's New York, uh, because it's such a high-profile job, yep. he's not going to escape it with excuses. Well, nor should he, especially when you call us out with the receipts thing. That's right. You know, if, if you kind of slide in the back door and, you know, it's one thing, all right, you know, we've, been, we've lost for a decade. We've got a lot to fix here. We've got... I inherited basically nothing, bereft of talent. We will give you time if we believe that you got this thing moving in the right direction. Listen, if the Jets were one and two, but they were one and two because they were losing 16, 13, 17, 10, I'd say, okay, the guy that they hired who had this incredible uh, positive scouting report around the NFL, who comes with an incredible defensive prowess, allegedly, mm-hmm. if they were losing defensively, and they were on point, I could say, all right, you know, here we go. Yeah, this is kind of what we expected. But their defense stinks. <laughs> and by the way, how many first-round picks do you need on the defensive line to get a sack? <laughs> That's right. You mentioned how it. many do you, need, do you need to bring in nine? You mentioned it last. The how thir- many? 13 sacks. Sheldon Rankin's first-round pick. <laughs> Quentin Williams' first-round pick. I thought Carl Lawson was good. He's not. He's not. 
Get Franklin Myers, give him $40 million. Moronic penalty. I mean, it, and, and what bothers me the most, and I know, and I want to be fair to Coach Sava here, I know he does not accept this. I know it's driving him nuts. But when you come out with energy and you project toughness and you start throwing these mantra, all gas, no brakes, we look at you, we're like, this is the guy. We will roll into the back alley with you, and no matter where you take us, we will have your back. And then your players show almost no regard to the team, Corey Davis. Just get, you know what? I'm tired. Of, get You see these rumors? That, trade them. Oh, this team, this, uh, this NFC team might want to take Corey Davis. Take him. <laughs> we don't want him. We want to play Denzel Mims. Get rid of Get rid of him. Right, so you do these selfish things. To me, I expected at least the day that he was hired, the image that I conjured up in my head about Robert Sava, I expected him to be on the field. I know it's not JV football. You're not going to grab a guy by the face mask. He might light you up. I mean, they're professionals. But, geez, can you can you show some I, can, can you show some emote? Like, can you be not just when you win? Like, I really thought he was going to be different on game day. Much better in terms of concept. Listen, Ulbrich, we're going to give you one more week. This I will say. We'll give you one more week. Mm, All right? I'll give you one more week. I don't know what Woody Johnson will give you. Probably. I I know. Well, I know what he'll give us. On Thursday, Woody Johnson will tweet what uniforms we're wearing against the Steelers. Like I give a rat's behind because we lose in all of them. No matter. Right? But if Ulbrich doesn't have some defensive responsibility taken away from him this week. And if Robert Sala right now is not, and I believe he is, scouring film, and then when they start to ratchet up for the Steelers, walk into that defensive meeting room, take it over, and basically say, yo, Ulbrich, listen, we got problems here. And if this isn't fixed, we're both gone. If he can't do that, then they unequivocally hired the wrong person. Yep. It's gotten to the point where he has to, to save his job, Robert Sala, take over the defense. You see this down in Houston. Now, the Texans are nowhere near ready to win because they have a JV quarterback. You talk about JV players. Davis Mills just isn't quite that guy right now. But Lovey Smith, he told us a couple weeks ago, why would I take a head coaching job and then stop coaching? If you're a defensive-minded yeah, guy exactly, and this is what your calling card is, Call the defenses. It's like us, you know, it's just, it's doing just, a radio show and then saying, no, I'm going to do updates instead. That's right. No, it's, we're, it's we're, we're going to host the show. That's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I can't. I just, Offensive Jesus. head coaches who are play callers, they call their own plays. They ruin everything. Doug Peterson, he calls his plays, yep. right? Sean McVay, he calls his plays. It's, it's what you're supposed to do. If you're a head coach and you're hired for a certain side of the ball, call the plays because it's the only way you're going to get control and it's the only way you're going to get the defense in this case for the Jets and the image that you actually wanted in. You could already see this thing going in the wrong direction. And we're very, if there's one thing we're good at as Jets fans, we are good at reading when things are going sideways. And right now, they're sideways. All right, rinse out of the Town Fair Tire Studio. Our friends at Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Yankees keep winning. No bombs for Judge over the weekend. Mets, listen, here we go. I know that the Grom stuff wasn't, you know, wasn't optimal, but still handling business. Sets up the series. We all knew that it would be with the Braves coming up this week and a little later in the week. So, and of course, the G Men tonight. We're absolutely stacked. 877 337 6666. 